It's the age-old offence of pickpocketing, and now it's Britain's latest crime wave. Making this kind of money and having the adrenaline rush with it is brilliant, yeah, I love it. It's £300 a week for me. The thieves are making a killing. £3,150 in one day. Many swarm in from Eastern Europe. Two Romanian females just walked past us looking in the bags. We're going to go with these two. I'm very suspicious that you were looking for opportunity to steal in there. And then use criminal cash to build flashy pads back home. It's just a way for them to show their power. It's very glamorous. They like that a lot. These are the criminals who are pickpockets and proud. But British pickpockets like Rob have competition, and it comes from an influx of Eastern European criminals, with thefts on UK streets often paying for luxury homes in Romania. This trio work the pubs and clubs of Liverpool, targeting people who are out having too much of a good time. And John is the leader. For example, yourself, you, you drink, 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 drink too much. You forget everything. You don't feel nothing. Can I take it to your wallet? Can I take it to your phone? I don't know how, what we have inside in the pocket. Very easy. Very, very easy. As they prowl the streets, John's in charge. He IDs the victims, then sends the others in to do the thieving. Cipriano, I think something here, you go in the inside. What I'm going to take it, it's coming outside and give to me. And you go in the other one place, in the corner, in one woman, old woman. Be careful, yeah? What time you take it, you give to me quickly, and I'm going, yeah? Hi. And while John talks tactics, in the background, the others emerge with a phone they've just nicked. Other one do it. No, have nothing. I'm looking for a different person. And now it's coming something. OK. Can you go now, please? He's ready. So more UK victims and more cash on the way back to Romania. The lives of modern-day pickpockets are far removed from the days of crime that this old-school dipper enjoyed. I just want to be a Mark Streetway. Oh, Patrick Whelan has worked the Manchester crowds for decades. This guy here would have been a target. Straight over like that. In. Back in them days, 30 years ago, we were like awful dodgers. We knew no better. We didn't see it in the crime, really. Then we hit the lower class, so we straight to rich. We were poor. We were taught, simple as that. We lived off the land, and that's the way it went. I don't regret it, I had a great time. But Patrick, now just an occasional dipper, says the influx of foreign pickpockets means today there's no honour among thieves. Today, I see on TV Romanians and Bulgarians and Algerians robbing children, stealing phones. That's against my belief. What I see them doing now, I feel ashamed. I've been a pickpocket because we're classed as the League of Gentlemen and we never hit the working... And big results are exactly what the army of pickpockets working UK streets today have in their sights. But in London, there's a completely different pickpocketing landscape. This is a European hotspot attracting foreign gang members like these. They're tempted by cash-rich tourists. And these guys come from Romania, the country at the top of the pickpocketing league. I like London because it's beautiful, but also there is a lot of money to be made here. These three are from a small gypsy village. Harry's 36 and divorced. He's been here two years. Gheorghe is 22, his friend Sorin, 23. They've only just arrived. They work in a gang of six. In Romania, it's different. People are poor, not like here in London. These people have lots of money. You can pickpocket these people so easily on the tube or when they return drunk from the pubs. It's so fucking easy to pickpocket them. Last year, in London, a third of all the pickpockets arrested were Romanian. In London, it's good because there are many tourists and we can operate better. 
The tourists carry money on them and we can knock them down, so to say. We can pickpocket them. This is the right time to take advantage due to the fact that there are many people here. We sneak in the crowd and we take their wallets, their phones, whatever they have on them. We don't spare them. There are situations when you can steal around two, three hundreds, and there are situations when you can steal around two thousand, three thousand, and five, six phones. It depends on what area we are in, how busy it is, how many tourists there are. It depends on the weather too, because if it's lousy, there are no tourists, you see. There are hundreds of big Eastern European gangs working continental capitals like Paris and London. But these crims say nobody tells them what to do. We work this for ourselves. There are others who send their people here to steal, but we don't have orders from anyone. We work for ourselves. There are other gangs in France, Belgium, so the pimp is in Romania and the others are sent to steal. This is how it works. But despite the huge amounts they can steal, Eastern European criminals like these don't live in five-star hotels because most of the money these men take is sent back to Romania. I want to build myself a house in Romania, so I send some money back home. So I send the money to my family. They've bought some land and want to build a house, and this, this is what I use the money for. Europol has now highlighted how cheap travel has made it even easier for foreign criminals to hit Britain and make quick money. But the pickpockets aren't getting everything their own way. The cops are on their case. Darren Bond and Steve Stamp are part of Operation Orb, an initiative to crack down on a crime that's blighting the capital. The type of crime we're dealing with, we call dipping, when your person puts their hand into somebody's handbag and takes something, pickpocketing, where a hand goes into the pocket, or a bag is taken, all those type of crimes statistically are put together as theft person. Theft person over recent years has been bucking the trend nationally for crime figures and has been going up and up and up. And within London, Oxford Street, Bond Street, Regent Street are really their gold mine, where they're most likely to get the high value thefts. London's the epicenter of UK pickpocketing with nearly half of all UK theft crimes on almost all the national increase in pickpocketing. So the Met Police has its work cut out. A lot of our work, it is groundwork. It's all right with intelligence and things like that, but you have to be out on the street. And uh, we're hunting, really. As you can start seeing everyone having a few drinks, relaxing, leaving bags down on the ground and things like that. It's a perfect place for bag thieves and pickpockets. We're looking mainly for people that are looking to pickpocket at junctions or anywhere where there's a crowd where it's natural for somebody to get close up into somebody's personal space. Quite often on the street like this, we'll notice somebody just because they're hurrying along unnaturally. They'll be making their way through the crowd very quickly. It'll catch your eye. It's atypical behaviour. They'll be looking down at bags or towards back pockets and that's what often gives them away. It's more rewarding when we get the ones that do play cat and mouse. Some of the tricks they'll do is going into the larger department stores which have escalators. They'll go down an escalator and immediately come back up and watch who's followed them down. They'll go down an alleyway, go around the corner, wait a couple seconds, come back up again. If you make eye contact with them, that's it. You're blown out. Now, the days of British pickpockets ruling the continent are gone. Today, Eastern Europeans are the kings of crime, and many are working the streets of the UK. The Liverpool gang who targeted drunks in pubs and clubs came here for legit cash. Vino ăsta este de la mine de acasă. Eu drink too much, my friend. 
John and his mates knew that what you can earn in a month in Romania, you can make in the UK in just two days. In Romania, you need to work too much and not have nothing. What time you live here in this country, have normal life because the salary in a, in a more better, better, better. John's 38. He's been in Liverpool with his wife and young son for two years. George is his younger brother, Cipriano, the friend. All three get just 100 quid a week washing cars, but they want more cash, a better lifestyle, so they pick pockets. Sometimes need to do something wrong. No, it's nice, but sometimes need to do it something illegal. And that something illegal can mean stacks of cash. 200, 300. Maybe more. Maybe seven, 800 pounds. Maybe in a week, maybe coming more than 1,000. The best record is, is 3,150 pounds. 3,150 pounds in one day. But not all the time. Same in, in Lotto, you know. Same in Lotto. This is the pig fat. It's not just food from Romania that these guys love. So it's no surprise that the money they make here from crime is sent back home. My family no have money, no have nothing. Every week I send money for Romania. John's just bought a pad near Bucharest. He'll move back with his family when he's made enough out of the UK. I have uh, one nice house, one apartment. Very big, in a level three. And now he's kitting it out with cash from pickpocketing. My family is very happy, my wife is very, very happy. But we need to do something extra, can you put something inside? And a flat screen TV is at the top of his shopping list. And evidence of pickpocketing is something the Met Police are always after. So Darren Bond is back on the streets with Tim Malden by his side. All right, what's he wearing again? And it's not long before they've got a target, a man who's been caught pickpocketing before. What we got, mate? I see three with a brown cap on his head. They'll be coming out onto Regent Street, Nietzsche and H&M. Yeah. I'm opposite the Argyle Arms. I've got him in my peripheral on the corner there. So uh, you're by the currency exchange, yeah? It's a game of cat and mouse. So we're still watching um, Mal from earlier. He's, he's done some jobs in the pickpockets or bag thefts, sorry, in cafes. I personally haven't dealt with him, but some of the other team have. He just doesn't fit the environment. He's not actually doing anything. We'll keep on him for a bit, see what he does. But while they wait and watch, other team members elsewhere are in hot pursuit. Two live jobs on the go. We've got PC Bond, who's actually following somebody now going in and out of cafes. And we've also got another informant who's watching a male trying to pickpocket somebody. Yeah, he's following a Romanian who has approached an Arab female with a pushchair. Two Romanian females just walked past us looking in the bags. We're going to go with these two. The male has gone downstairs. He stood up near the front here having a look at the tables where the ladies were sat looking for mobile phones. I think he's definitely a job, definitely on it. He's attempted to reach into a female's bag. Finally, the cops decide to strike. Excuse me, mate. Police, I'll show you my warrant card. You've got to be searched under Section 1 of Pace. You're detained for the purpose of that search. Go get him. Let's get him. Grab him. Hi, right, sir. PC Bond, West End Central Police Station. I'm very suspicious that you were looking for opportunity to steal in there. Yeah, no problem. The suspects are held. The police know what they were planning to do, but they need evidence. And both of these guys are clean. Be careful your stuff over there. There's thieves around. Mobile phones are nicked in 70% of pickpocket-type crimes because they can be sold on quickly and for big sums of cash. That's why they're a speciality for London pickpocket Sarge. Say if you snatch a purse or snatch a wallet or pickpocket a wallet, you're more, more likely to find credit cards, which you can't do anything because obviously credit card needs a PIN number. Where you know when you get a phone, it's guaranteed money. And every day something new phones are coming out. Everybody wants, everybody likes different different phones, you know.
Monty is Sarge's pickpocketing partner. Their MO is to dress up smart and target drunks. If you don't have a shower, don't have a shave yet, you can't stand there next to someone else. If you look like druggies or uh, uh, like thieves or, uh, you know what I mean? So Monty's ready for a night on the town. Uh, you all right? Yeah, you all right? How you been? Yeah. Oh, fuck, man, I've been for you too long. Come on, let, let's go, innit? Tonight, they're targeting a huge shopping centre. So listen, what we do, yeah? Mm. Let's go down there, Westville first, see what's happening there. Just to come quick, man. And it's not long before Sarge and Monty have had some success. Yeah, listen, no, it's all right, basically. Well, if it's the camera, yeah. I'll fuck it, didn't it, man? Basically, um, as we see a drunk person and he wasn't quite with it, so he was like all like walking and like, so we knew from the, the way that how he was acting from his walking, he wasn't right there. So I, I, as I went, approached him, I said, what's the time, mate? And he was like tumbling a bit and I said, is there any bars or whatever open? At this time, my friend Monty has gone behind him and he's kind of pinched it out of his back. And as, he's, as, as he turned around, like Monty was just like there, so I'm trying to distract him, making him look at me. As, as I knew Monty's walking away straight, like going fast, I knew he's got something, and then I went, all right, mate, all right, and then we just went off, basically. These guys are addicted to heroin. It's the only reason they targeted the drunk. This ain't even HTC, you know that? That is taking a bit advantage of somebody who's not quite there, you know? It's a shame, really, because He's probably got all his contact numbers in there. He's probably got his fault, like all photos of his kids or grandchildren or whatever, which is a shame, but we don't really care about that. I mean, I know what I would go through if somebody took my phone. He must be going through the same, but really and truly, we don't care because we need the drugs right now. I mean, we wouldn't have to do this if we was off the drugs, but it's just drugs is just, just making us low. Let's go, man. We can't stand here, and we we run, man. In Europe, there's clear evidence of profits from established pickpocketing networks. This is Liliana Cibano, an investigative journalist who studied crime links between Romania and Britain. We're just entering Sintesht, which is a small village around 20 kilometers away from Bucharest, the capital city. She's tracked down a village of Romanian gypsies, where some properties have been funded by pickpocketing gangs working in the UK. As we will enter uh, the heart of the village, you'll get to see all these huge, luxurious houses that these Roma people built. The whole village is very controversial because many of the people living here have been involved in all sorts of crimes, um, but it's very hard to prove a link between, uh, you know, the houses built here and the crimes they committed abroad. One of the reasons they build these huge houses is because they want to show their power and their wealthness. It's just a way for them to, to send the message to the outside world. Sometimes they have um, luxurious cars parked in front of the houses. It's very um, glamorous. They like that a lot. There are 240 Romanian gangs making millions across Europe. Many have pickpocketing networks. Others will be involved in more extreme crime. So here, it's not safe to stop and film. We are somewhere um, outside the village. And as you can see behind me, you get a sense of the scale of the houses and how massive they are compared to the, the rest of the community. And the power of these criminal clans means even in a neighboring village, people are too scared to speak out. I spoke to a few people, uh, a few locals, and well, most of them said that, well, we are aware of the houses and the rich Roma people living there. They said that, you know, they might have committed all sorts of crimes in the past in Romania or abroad in order to gain that money. They see those huge houses and those luxurious cars and they're just afraid. They're just afraid to do anything and to say something on camera because they are aware of their power. 
And there's yet more proof of how Eastern Europe is dominating 21st century pickpocketing. Romanian techie Valentin Boanta was jailed for five years for inventing card skimming devices that were used on British ATMs. I was arrested for building this um, kind of uh, structures or kind of devices which are uh, copying the data from the cards. I manufacture these kind of uh, devices and I sell them. There are hundreds of men like me which are uh, doing this kind of stuff, which are fabricate this. So the people who use this uh, kind of devices are thousands. It's big. It's an industry. European banks lose half a billion quid a year from card skimming devices. But as banks pay back money stolen from cards, this guy thinks it's a victimless crime. If you want a romantic point of view, so let's say about Robin Hood, you say it's your hero. So the money is not from you, it's not your money. You get your money back. But Valentin is poacher turned gamekeeper. Now he's used his ingenuity to create security to protect ATMs from exactly the sort of device that he once invented. You need the wolf to catch wolf. You cannot catch wolf with ships. You have to recruit criminals. So now I make a security system for ATMs. I believe it's uh, the best security system available on the market now. So I'm quite proud of my work. More antisocial behaviour as the new series of The Nightmare Neighbour Next Door continues tomorrow at 8. Next tonight, though, the debt problem takes hold. In new series, Can't Pay, we'll take it away.